Oh my gosh. Okay. I have such a good one for you today, you guys. Welcome back to our channel, YouTube. My name is Kristen Forgione. I'm the founder, creative director, and principal designer here at The Lifestyle Co. And I was just, my mind blown, looking at the before photos of this project. It's a renovation, which, and I say it like that because once I show you the whole thing, you're literally going to not even believe that this project is a renovation because it looks and acts like a new build. So um, this is a big one. So big one, not necessarily in square footage because this is going to give you guys such an amazing look at a super, super, super layered home that's 3,700 square feet. So our PV Vista build you loved and that home was also a little bit more intimate. So you see all these big mamma jammas all over our channel and we love working on those, but we also love working on an intimate floor plan because it's a little bit more challenging and it's so much more relatable, right? So you can really picture how this home feels and is layered and how warm and cozy it is. Um, partially because of the size. It's also gonna demonstrate that size does not equal, right, amazing design quality. We are getting so much out of this house. These clients were wonderful and they allowed us to flex our design muscles in so many ways. So you're gonna really love that. The lead designer on this project is Rachel McCloskey and the builder is David from 4Gen Homes. You have not seen a project that we've worked on with him here on our channel before. It is beautiful and he and his team did such amazing work. So I am going to dive right in here in the entryway. Here in the entryway, we really wanted to make sure that we were able to convey the client's true design aesthetic. Of course, we're designing under Organic Desert Living and that's why she chose to work with us. She is also completely equipped to do this on her own. She has designed many of her own houses. So as designers, we love to collaborate with people like that because they have such good taste and she had amazing taste throughout the very beginning. So in this home, you're gonna see a lot of her personal pieces sprinkled in along with, of course, a brand new remodel and furnish in furniture. So um, it's just been a dream project and, and truly I think you guys are gonna be so impressed with it. It is one that we took all the way down to the studs. We also added some square footage to take us to 3,700 square feet, if I'm remembering correctly. Three bedrooms, three and a half baths. You guys, it's like a no it's like a normal, as you're gonna call it, house, which you always beat us up for. Um, so this is just one that is so relatable and like I said, so layered. So starting with the layering early, right? We want the homeowner, our client, and of course, his and her guests as they come in to be immediately transformed into a space that is, as I said, layered, right? We want every single visual clue to be showing the aesthetic in, in truly that kind of, that kind of vintage um, Northern California kind of Sonoma Napa inspired desert home. So um, this beautiful stone is, I wanna say from Solstice Stone. And if this is your first time watching with us, we try to link as many materials or at least source our materials in the description in our YouTube videos. So while you're here, make sure you subscribe, talk to us in the comments, but if you hear me say something that you like on the channel or on the video, immediately go to the description because we've likely either linked a place you can find it or sourced it in the, in the notes. So um, we do try to be resourceful. Obviously sconces are such a moment here. They are from Etsy, they're handmade. We got them from a provider and shipped them here to the US, which I just think they're fantastic. Um, another note, most of the furniture that we can share is sourced right from the Lifestyle Co. shop. So we'll link that stuff in the description, but you can shop accessories from this home, furniture, rugs, lighting, all at www.thelifestyleco.com. We like to make it easy for you. We're trying to help you bring organic desert living into your life. So I'm gonna back you up. Right off the entry is the home office and den. And in this space, it's a little tricky. It's it's a it's a big room, but we had to get a lot of, of function out of this room. So this is where our client Jeff works um, and also Karen, his wife, they will kind of tag team in here when they need to. We also wanted an additional um, TV space. She wants to watch her shows and she wanted to have a space that she could close these beautiful iron and glass doors and hang out. So these consoles are the perfect depth. They just help to anchor the TV. Obviously went with a, a seating area that you could hang out and watch the show's on. So I love this bench moment, kind of used as um, a coffee table so you could put your feet up, get comfortable, beautiful rug, built-ins of course for all of your office storage. Um, these are some sentimental moments that they had had and we wanted to make sure we incorporated. We've got some wine loving people here, which I totally connect with. 
um, an architect's desk, just a great area you can open a laptop and, and get your work done. And then here, if you want to come close, this is the original plan of the home. So it looks very different. Um, and when you see the outside, like this actually went, and I'm, I'm thinking about it, it was sad. It was a beautiful courtyard, um, but it's so much better now. And we love the idea of, of just reminiscing, right, about where we came from. The house was built in 1978, so um, we've given it all, a whole new life and it is just so gorgeous. So for most homes built in 1978, you can imagine what the befores look like. And we actually have some frames to show you that will work in through the video. Um, the spaces were small and they were compartmentalized. So one of our client's main goals was to open it all up, which is what you see here. Adding the beam treatment just spoke such volumes. We also were really selective in lighting and went with just one huge fixture here. This Mamma Jamma is from Arteriors. It is stupid expensive. And when you see it in person, you can understand why it's stupid expensive because the scale is so amazing. It's got hand-blown glass. It's just an incredible fixture and really helps us kind of delineate the space, although we're trying to make it feel like one big space. So before I take you further into kind of the living space, this area that I'm standing kind of between right now is both living space and then dining space. So for those of you that have floor plans that don't have a designated breakfast nook or an all day dining space or a formal dining, this space plan was genius. Um, Rachel designed this sofa piece and this bench piece as one unit. So we had our custom workroom work with us to create this unit so that it fit perfectly and seamlessly. I was a little worried when, when we were talking through concept that it would look like a little collegiate if we didn't make it a really substantial, impactful piece that felt high-end and luxe. So by doing it through our custom, our, our custom workroom, we were able to keep every detail really, really precise and make sure that it didn't feel that way and it felt like a beautiful custom piece of furniture that we literally designed every other piece of furniture in this room around. So you've got that banquette, seating, you know, comfortable, cozy kind of feel, but you can get 10 people here, which I love. Then flipping over into this space, a single bench, um, sofa, performance fabric, of course we love. It's, it's got a lot of furniture and a lot of seating areas, but it's easy, right? It doesn't feel stuffy, it just feels cozy and comfortable. Um, these I absolutely love. These are from the um, client's personal collection and they are so comfortable. Um, I, I love them and I tried to buy them from her and she wouldn't give them to me. So <laughs> here, here they stay. Um, and then if we also take a look at kind of this focal wall, I also thought this was such an incredible use of such a huge wall. So back in renovation pre-planning, Plans got, got submitted, we're through the city, we're actually in the field, and we find out that there's an error on the plans and we actually lost about four feet in this space, four feet. So in an intimate floor, floor plan, four feet is like 40 feet. Okay, it's not like 40 feet, but it's a lot of feet. And it was a little bit of like one of those take your breath away jarring moments of, oh my God, how do we work through this? So what that did was really eliminate the amount of depth that we had for furniture or built-in cabinetry. In addition, when you see the kitchen, you're gonna understand just how grand the kitchen feels. And we had to make sure in one big open space that we balanced the two sides. So this concept came to be, and these are actual case pieces from Restoration Hardware. I'm just gonna tell you where they're from. They're from Restoration Hardware. Um, and we inset them into the wall so that they look completely built in. They're beautiful. Uh, we could have made them custom with our cabinet provider, but frankly, by the time you got down to it, trying to nail the finish, including hardware, including finishing the entire interior, it was just a lot more cost effective to source from um, a stock furniture provider and inset them into the wall. So it turned out gorgeous. The sconces above are absolutely incredible. They can be purchased through us um, and the way they're styled. I just love it. I think it, it is such a moment that just really makes it feel nice and clean, not stuffy, not super, super layered with just a ton of cabinetry. Um, I just love it. I think it, I just, I think it turned out so incredibly beautiful and so innovative. The doors and windows in this project are from Sierra Pacific. They are urban casement in black exterior and interior. And this, like this is so good. You guys know we love an earthy, vibey kitchen moment where we're bringing in elements from the exterior in, where we're really paying homage to all of the gosh, centuries of beautiful handmade and natural materials um, in it. And this is no exception. So this project from the very beginning was envisioned. And have I even told you what the hashtag is? 
was project can I have that for obvious reason. I'm sure you're already like, oh my God, can I have that? Can I have that? Um, so when our marketing team came up with it, I thought it was just perfect. Um, back to the kitchen. So the natural materials in here are ample. This countertop um, and the countertop that also extends outside is quartzite. It's incredible. I love it. I love that we were able to just go with a raw edge. So we didn't get super fancy in here in terms of edging because there's a lot to look at. This, give me a guess what you think this material is. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds. Listen to it. Does it look a little thicker? That like tumbled edge, that wider grout joint? It's outdoor paver. Outdoor paver that we put on the wall, mitered the corners, and it just, it, it's that play on maybe a more, could, could potentially be a dated look of like stacked stone or something. Um, it's so good. I think it turned out just absolutely incredible. We love it. And then we also continued with a header above here in that same quartzite. Um, the appliances in this project are Thermador. We don't spec a lot of Thermador, but our client had experience with Thermador and we are all very impressed. This is Thermador induction cooktop. And then every other appliance in here, including the dishwashers are Thermador. So I'm excited to hear how she feels about that long term. So far, she's really happy about it. Um, we just kept it simple, like I said. So I think potentially there could be a range inlay here or something that again, brings in another material. But when you look around, there's, a, there's already a lot of material. And so part of design is knowing kind of when to pull back and when to allow what you have to really speak. Um, the countertop on the island is ivory white hone from Arizona Tile. And then for both sink moments in here, which are both over 36 inches, we did these, these kind of protruding apron fronts, which is such a beautiful way to one, have much more durable cabinetry because you don't have that apron front here in cabinetry, which can be damaged by water long-term. So it's super wipeable, it's nice and easy. And instead of having the farmhouse apron front, we actually used an undermount sink and then created the apron front with the countertop. This beauty is roll. And what if I told you about living finishes? For all of you YouTubers who have been on our channel for many years, this is a living finish and a living finish means that it is going to patina over time. So if you're wondering why we didn't clean the sprayer before we shot, it's not gonna come clean. It's better that way. We actually pay extra, a lot of extra, to have the brass unlacquered so that over time, all of those water spots and all of the hand oils and everything that you are touching gets better. The color and the quality just becomes even more natural um, and we love it and it's amazing. These humongous pendants are 36 inches wide. They are this white concrete plaster. And let me see, hold on, it's really fancy over here. Let me see if I can turn them on. <sighs> How gorgeous are they? So we went for ambient lighting over a kitchen island instead of task lighting, which I know is mind blowing. And before someone's like, oh my God, she's gonna cut her finger off in there. She's not, there's plenty of task lighting in the space. We have a ton of lighting in here, a ton of cans. There's plenty of light. So we don't have to worry about safety as it relates to the type of pendant lighting. So if you're looking for a license to get a little bit more creative with your pendant lighting over your island, I just gave you one. Okay, so you guys know the key to a highly optimized and very organized kitchen is built-ins and a, a wall of them. So you've got a 30 inch freezer, a 36 inch refrigerator, an 18 inch wine column, and then not one, but two armoire style storage pieces. And this one, they both actually have retracting armoire doors, which is so nice. And then in here, you wanna make sure that you're always putting in power. So there's electrical there so that you can have your toaster, your KitchenAid or your coffee machine, your blender, whatever. And then we also always put countertop in here so it's nice and wipeable. So this is so optimized, so amazing for living. There's also roll out pantry drawers. Like think about not only the outside of your cabinet and how it looks, but also the inside and how it functions for you. Right off of the kitchen is the secondary or guest wing. So there's two guest rooms over here, both with ensuite bathrooms and they're intimate rooms. And we wanted to make sure that guests would of course be comfortable um, without really, really packing the space. So I feel like this is such a good demonstration of how to have a really beautifully furnished and tailored room with lots of layers um, without making it feel basic, if that makes sense. So um, this is a new bed piece from us and I love it. It's got this, this um, like pillow 
headboard, if you will, with these beautiful ties. I just think it's it's like partly coastal, still giving that like slip cover kind of vibe, which I love. Um, we love waffle bedding. Um, the space is just, it's, it's calm. It's calm, it feels really inviting. I love the way Rachel selected to do a vintage rug here on the wall. So again, trying to create moments that are constantly giving visual clues as to what the aesthetic of the home is. We want it to feel aged. It's definitely got a little bit of a vintage feel to it. It's got a really balanced color palette. All in all, it's just a really simple space, but has so many layers. So then in the bathrooms, which again is where we really flexed in this project. So took a lot of risks with materials. I don't know if I can get me and you in the bathroom here, but we'll try. Um, so this space, we inset a soapstone countertop here in the cabinetry, which I love. Did wall mounted plumbing. We also created a ledge here, which looks so good. And just again, adds detail. So these little, little bits of intentional design choices are really changing the space from a very small space that could be kind of basic into something really layered. In the bathroom, we did an, a, a different color, so slightly darker colorway of the same paver. And I love that now you can see it in a use um, in a bathroom space or a shower space. I'm telling you guys, pavers, like <laughs> they are so dynamic. And I used a paver in my own personal home on my guest bath floor and I love it. So I love that we've been able to continue it. I also love like the rounded edges and how that just really becomes blare glaringly obvious with the grout joint. Um, I can also mention, since you're so close to the door, <laughs> the doors and their profile, they have just this little bit of raised um, kind of detail with a recess in the center. So I love that that is a nod to, to kind of the traditionalist in our clients and, and their aesthetic and what they wanted for the home. These are M-Tech in brass. Um, and I cannot remember the paint color off the top of my head. It might be Kingsport Gray. Check the description because if it's not Kingsport Gray, we'll put the right color in. So I'm really trying to connect to the spaces for you in this video because as I mentioned, this the house is 3,700 square feet approximately. So I'm still on that secondary wing side. I'm walking down the hallway. We have to take a moment for these gorgeous sconces. We'll link them in the, in the description for you. They're, they're like petite and perfect. And I love this little mini bulb. Mm, chef's kiss, gorgeous. So we're in the second guest room. Um, this space, same kind of thing, right? We wanted them to feel, um, have the same level of identity, but have their, the actual physical properties, furnishings, and bathroom space feel different. Um, this mirror, I have to mention, this was from the client's archives, and I love it. It was actually in the garage. Rach was not planning on using it, <laughs> but saw it and hung it, and I just feel like it like captivates the space. It is so gorgeous and humongous, and probably one of those things that you're like, oh, is that dated? Oh my gosh, no, not at all. It's it's perfect. So I love that it's getting new life here. This case piece is stunning. Again, kind of pairing the new and, and really cutting edge looking, if you will, and visually intriguing with something old is never, ever, ever gonna do you wrong. So beautiful canopy bed. I love, again, the way the space just feels so balanced and tranquil. If I walked into this guest room at my friend's house, actually, if I walked into this guest room or that one at an Airbnb or a hotel or anywhere, I would probably never leave. So um, we like to make our guests comfortable, but not stay that long. Into the bathroom, shall we? So um, this, again, we reused the same spec in the soapstone for the countertop. When you are specking your countertops, if you can think about the, slab, the size of the slab and how big your runs are, that will save you a lot of money. So don't go specifying four different countertops for four different bathrooms if your vanity sizes are petite like this because you're gonna end up with a ton of waste and it's gonna cost you so much money. It is totally okay to reuse the same countertop spec. So soapstone in here, um, vanity. I love these little petite ball poles. They're really small and just really are, are scaled perfectly for this. I also love how the mirror is hanging from above and then we inset it in that soapstone. So it follows that pattern. Again, these are just like these intentional design details Rach is so good at and, and really brought, brought it to the next level here in this project. In petite floor plans, I'm telling you it's even more important than in these huge floor plans. Then into the shower, um, if you'll notice, shower curtain. We finally got a client <laughs> to want to go with us in the floor to ceiling linen shower curtain moment. So, um, it's like the best, I love it. It just, again, like we don't, everything doesn't have to be like slick and clean and glass and, you know, see-through and all those things. There's like nothing wrong 
with a shower curtain moment. So we love it. So I, I think this turned out just so beautiful. This tile is from Clay. It is the liege. You know we love our liege. It just, you can just like pet the wall because it's just so textural and gorgeous. I love that we worked in, sorry, these are a little off. Um, I love that we worked in the soapstone ledge. The contrast is beautiful. It just gives so much age and detail. I should also mention that all of the plumbing, uh, the bathroom plumbing is from Phil Rich, one of our favorite providers because they have so many different finishes. They're American made. It's just a great, um, a great plumbing, plumbing provider. In addition to, we usually also use Kohler. Um, floor is a two by two travertine. This is from Solstice Stone. I love it. I'm actually a really hard sell on two by two. I feel like sometimes it goes like kind of mid-century and modern. And in this case, because we started it at the door and ran it all the way through the shower pan and the curb, I just feel like, again, it helps a small space just feel a little bit more elongated um, and really grounds everything beautifully. Before I take you to the primary wing side of the house, this bar you guys, it doesn't need to be big to be impactful and very, very, very pretty. And this is just such a good example of that. Um, it's perfect. It has an ice machine and then this little teeny, tiny little sink that really, look at that. So this is the components faucet from Kohler. I love it. It has this rocker that you actually um, turn the water on and off with. And this is hot water, this is cold water. So look at that, it's got like a full, what is that, maybe 60 degrees of movement. I love it. We have this in our office too, so you can use it in a bathroom. Um, but I particularly love the application uh, in a bar. So this is this black hammered sink. And the idea, right, is that here you're dumping ice or you're cutting citrus and then you're kind of like washing your fingertips. So it doesn't need to be big. This is not a place where you would actually wash glassware. We've got two dishwashers in the kitchen for that. So I also love, this is the ivory white hone, which is the same spec that we did on the island. I love how we rounded it here and kind of tapered it off and then matched the cabinet with this big chunky floating shelf. It's so well appointed and is just the perfect amount of bar without being kind of, you know, too bar. I also love that we don't have any liquor displayed here. It's just nice and clean and feels very decor-like. This art piece is from our client's collection. It's over 50 years old. I wanna say she got it from her, gosh, I could be making this up, but I swear she told me she got it from her mom's neighbor a very long time ago. So um, again, this is something that Rach and team saw in the garage and thought, <laughs> well, we obviously have to use that. It wasn't even in the used pile. It was just like, as designers, when you see something that's like calling your name, you're like, all right, we're gonna make this work. So um, I love it. It's just absolutely perfectly placed there. Let's go to this side of the house. Laundry, very important to this client. So she wanted her laundry space to be equally beautiful as the rest of the house, but also obviously functional. So we have double laundry washer dryer stacks. And this space also doubles as an additional working space. So when we were designing the floor plan, we wanted to make sure that there was enough space here that we could actually get a desk in. So um, our client did a really good job of, of ensuring that there were spaces for us to furnish in addition to what we were, we were collaborating on. So I love that. I think it's such a great space. I love that you, we have this huge art moment in a laundry room, very rare. We typically don't get a lot of wall space. So that's exciting. We also took the Zalige in this space and did a full backsplash and on to the countertop, which is back. Those tile countertops that you used to see in like the nineties and two thousands, they're back, but they're not back with like four by four fugly tile. They're back with beautiful two by six Zalige handmade. Um, and it just looks incredible. I love how you can really understand and kind of see the profile on the edge detail and then how it's just nice and clean and rolls right up the back. I love that wall mounted plumbing here. Of course, we like little moments also. So this is micro art from our collection at the Lifestyle Co. Cabinets, this like sagey green um, pendants. Performing is kind of loft lighting here in this space. So these are just stunning. I love them. We will of course source those for you. And then coming through the laundry space, there's an additional utility space where their mud room, AV closet and additional uh, refrigerator is. To my left is the garage, to my right is the main entry into the house. I also wanna make sure I mention the flooring. So this is Picket from Ardo, and I'm gonna let you in on a little hiccup that maybe will make you guys feel better about your hiccups while renovating your building. This is a handmade special order, super long lead time tile. And it was actually a two piece set. So there was the picket and then there was the larger, did you guys hear that? I'm gonna keep going. 
um, the larger square that was actually supposed to be inset in it. Turns out whoever accidentally ordered all of the picket. And by the time we got around to laying it, it was very obvious that we weren't gonna be able to wait for the second part of the two piece set. So we said, you know what? This is design gods. Let's let it happen. As long as we love the way the lay turned out or the lay looks, we'll be good with it. So we love it. I think it turned out so beautiful. It's so long and linear. It's a playful shape. It feels youthful. The color is absolutely perfect. So at the end of the day, there are going to be things that happen in design and renovation. It's just part of the deal, right? It's the nature of the beast. And when they happen, you have the choice to either decide to freak out and slit throats or <laughs> to let it go and see what comes of it. And usually, I'm gonna say 85% of the time, if you just let the design gods kind of work, it all works out and, and looks great. So that's my take on that. But the flooring looks amazing. We've got mud space over here on the left, AV closet, little mirror that you can, you know, make sure you're checking yourself before you walk out to the garage. And then as I mentioned, a full depth fridge. I mentioned this house has three bedrooms and three and a half baths. The half is the powder bath here. It's just behind the great room space. This is another space that just demonstrates, right? Size doesn't need to equal impact. I love all of the finishes in here. This is a floating conservatory vanity that we actually made with the quartzite slab that's in the kitchen. That turned out beautiful. The flooring while you're down there is a two by eight. It is limestone real limestone in a straight stack. Again, gorgeous. These sconces, shockingly, I will say, only because I don't think of this retailer when I think of great lighting, are from Crate and Barrel. So like, lovely. Um, and I love this little pivot. Can you see yourself now? <laughs> I love this little pivot mirror. Just again, pull it, it pulls the mirror off of the wall. It's something playful. It's like when you're standing here washing your hands, you're like, oh my God, I love the detail in this mirror, right? So I love all of that focal paint color with a chair rail. And then this is a version of timbre. Um, and I can't remember the profile off the top of my head, but it's not rounded. You can see that it kind of peaks and then it has a little plateau of flat white oak. So again, it's just got so much impact. I love the micro art again from our collection over the toilet. It's just a great space. So I'm gonna walk you that way because again, I'm trying to make sure that you can kind of feel how the space is united. So this is a hallway moment. If you'll notice these little chef's kiss, sconces that I showed you on the secondary side, they're also on this hallway. So in a, again, in an intimate floor plan, it's really important that we're not overdoing it and trying to create too many moments. We really thought it was important to keep this side of the hallway with the sconces the same as that side with that same sconce spec. Beautiful gallery wall, which we created custom mats that have this arch. I feel like they look like an airplane window, which I love. I can't remember where I saw that, but someplace. And I said to Rach, Oh my God, we have, we should do this in a gallery wall. I love that it would kind of reinvent the gallery wall. As you know, we're gallery wall freaks. Um, and if you want to know how to do this, I have an online learning platform called Organic Desert Learning, and we have a course specifically about gallery walls. So we have frame sources for you. I show you how to edit photos. We print, we show you how to print photos, exactly how we do it. I also spent a very long time with my handyman trying to figure out exactly how he hangs our gallery walls and we go through all of that also so that's we'll link it in the description but it's www.organicdesertlearning.com so that's there also we just stepped foot into the primary bedroom we love a primary bedroom space that is equally bright and beautiful but has a little mood a little edge a little sex appeal we always want our primary spaces to feel androgynous um you know not not overly masculine not overly feminine unless for some reason that's the the vibe that we're going for and this space was like so lovely to do that in it's an odd shape and it just happened to be that way because of the parameters that we had to work with on the on the rebuild side so on the plan side excuse me <clears throat> so um, because it's an odd shape, we wanted to make sure that it felt super layered. So we went with this ceiling detail that is so simple. It's just a little two by, uh, actually I think it's a two and a half by four placed on the ceiling and just painted the same color as the rest of the room. So the overall body color in this house is Chantilly Lace by Benjamin Moore. And the same is true in here. We also changed the interior door color in this room only to white. 
Wanted to keep the contrast in the furnishings in those rich browns and then even a little hint of wine, which is again where we're kind of giving those visual clues to nod to that Northern California aesthetic, which I feel like this room just feels so beautifully. Uh, we were able to work in some of our clients' existing pieces, which I love, like this piece, these were her. She just had some like, amazing things. As I mentioned before, PV Vista Build, that client also just had a lot that, that we could kind of go on that we were able to plan for ahead of time. And this project was the same. So I feel like it feels so personal. And obviously you guys don't know our clients, but we do. And and they, they do, they had, they brought a lot to the table, both on the design phase and on the furnishings phase. And I, I loved that. So um, the bed is beautiful. It's a slip cover bed. What with kind of a different shape and lighting, it's got this triangle profile lots of layered bedding in a lot of different colorways, which again, just allow so much age and like just richness to exude. Um, I love these doors. This was a homeowner specification. Jeff, I'm gonna give it to you. He really wanted a door here and there was like talk of a barn door and we just said no, we didn't feel like that really matched the aesthetic of the home. So we went with these white oak single kerf Juliet doors. Did you hear it? You guys, I'm not a singer. Okay, so the Juliet doors, which I love. So come on in. Wait, I'm blocking the moment. Go back, go back out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open it for you so you can see the back. <laughs> Movie magic. Go, go, go. <laughs> you guys, the bathtub moment. Are you kidding? It's so good. It's, it's just amazing. And um, I love it and it is so clean. And I love that again, we're using that quartzite. We created this, this depth perception here and physical representation where we were able, able to run the wall mounted plumbing. This is Phil Rich, again, a living finish in unlacquered brass. And then these beauties, do you hear that saw? You guys, David, our handyman is out there building shelves in a utility closet. And next time I'm not gonna let him do that while we're filming because it's all I hear. So if you don't hear it, I'm happy about it. But anyway, back to the sconces. Oh, they're beautiful. The up light, like this is paramount. So in a bathroom space, you wanna have directional lighting, right? You wanna have directional lighting and you want to be able to have lighting coming at your face. You wanna have lighting that's going up. You wanna have lighting that's going down. And this just frames all of this so beautifully. Um, limestone in here, again, a natural material. We played a little bit of a nod to the shower curtain that we have in the secondary space with this closet moment. I love that. So instead of a closet door, she was like, you know what? No, I love the idea of adding some more upholstery and making it feel even cozier and just softer in the closet. So that turned out so, so, so good. Um, the black armoire, actually wait, before I go there, let me just go to the shower because I'm already here. So this is fluted marble from the tile bar. It's gorgeous. Again, unlacquered brass. It's, it's a simple shower. Like I, I love how simple it is and the bathroom itself is really simple. So like I said, we were able to play with these just super rich luxe materials. Another great thing about a shower that is half the size of a lot of the showers that, that we work on because we can up the price point of a lot of the materials. So um, just cause there's not so many. I just love it. I think it's so light and bright. I, I love the texture that it gives. I even love the, the petite grout joint here. I mean, who likes grout? Not very many people. We do play with some grout, actually. I think about like those one inch lines we used to do. And I still love those. Um, but in this particular case, I feel like the scale of the grout joint versus the fluting in the marble is so, so, so good. So I love that. Can you guys hear this? It's so obnoxious. I just can't even hide it anymore. And we can't stop filming every single time David's cutting a sheet of wood. So um, his and hers vanities, kept it really simple. I love this kind of finger pull look, but still surface mounted. Another thing I love about these vanities is the mirror fabrication. The mirror is, does it get a little dark over here? Shoot, I think the lighting, it's fine. Um, the mirror fab is six pieces of mirror that we custom cut and put together so that you got this really beautiful footprint where you have kind of the main mirror and then you have the two on either side. So another way you can do this, if you wanna even make it more formal, is by beveling the edge of the mirror, which we kind of wrestled with. In this case, I felt like the softness of just the easing was enough, but if you, if you ever wanted to take it to that super formal, like very traditional spot, 
um, you could definitely bevel the edges of each mirror, which would create even more of a prism. Then this, mm. <laughs> I know you guys love a hutch moment just as much as we do, or really a furniture moment in a bathroom. So this, I would say it went like this. We got the plans, we designed the house, we ordered the hutch because we pretty much designed this entire bathroom around this furniture piece. So we really wanted to make sure that it didn't go out of stock or get damaged, or if it was damaged, we could get another one. And it is so gorgeous. It provides obviously so much closed storage. It also provides that really beautiful open storage decor moment in here. I feel like this space just feels so found and so, so rustic and so layered, but also like really pretty. And it has, it has those elements of femininity that I think are just completely timeless. Oh my God, and I have to tell you, at the reveal, which one of these days we really need to film a client reveal, part of me feels like, whoopsies, <laughs> I'm back. Part, <laughs> part of me feels like by the time a client gets the, to the reveal, right, they're not on YouTube all the time, they don't film, so I don't wanna add that layer of them being super nervous on top of the fact that they're already super nervous to see their home after God knows how long, sometimes 18 months, sometimes a month, uh, um, 12 months, sometimes three years. So that's one of the reasons why we really haven't filmed a reveal, but these clients were just so great. And yesterday we're talking and we're looking at the gallery wall that I walked you past and our client says, oh, I've been timeless for a long time. And I was like, oh my goodness, that is the best quote I've ever heard. If she was on the Real Housewives, that would be her like, you know, she's holding like the thing. She'd be like, I've been done. Anyway, it was so good. So I wish you knew them because they're just great and I'm sure you can tell how much we love them. But um, yes, that that this space really does exude that timeless classic forever that we're all searching for. That's all she wrote for this one. I knew you guys would absolutely love this renovation. I can't wait to hear what you think in the comments. Make sure while you're here, you like and subscribe so you don't miss any other house tours like this one. I also am on our channel all the time sharing more about my lifestyle and of course our brand. If you'd like to follow me personally on Instagram, I am at Kristen Ford Gion. Our brand account is at The Lifestyle Co. And I will catch you on the next one.